Welcome to the Millennium Trail. Good morning, everyone. I'm once again at Lakewood Forest Preserve in Wakanda, Illinois. Uh, from here, you have access to the Millennium Trail. Uh, I believe I have three separate rides that I have on my all trails that start right from here that go uh, all different places, uh, one of which will take you all the way to Lake Michigan. So the ride I'm going to do today, uh, starting here in Wakanda, is going to go all the way north to uh, Round Lake. Uh, the Millennium Trail is not a rails to trails type of trail. This one has got more curves than any other trail I know of in the area. So lots of curves, lots of hills. It's nice and wide, crushed limestone in most places. I think there's a couple little spots that are paved. Uh, it's only the second time I've been able to ride this this year because I've been exploring new areas. And uh, earlier in the year when I rode this, I was actually stopped by a detour and we couldn't progress all the way to the end in Round Lake. So we had to turn around and just ride back. So after we uh, go underneath Route 176, uh, right, uh, shortly after that, uh, we lose the pavement and we are on crushed limestone. Lake County really takes care of the Millennium Trail. So bravo to them. Uh, it's nice and it's wide. Uh, under normal circumstances, it's very clean. And uh, there's only, I think, a couple spots I've noticed on this trail that could flood. Okay, so uh, our first stop is about 6.7 miles away from where we started. We're at Singing Hills Forest Preserve. Uh, let's take a look at this map here. So this map here, Lakewood Forest Preserve is where we started right here. And then there's all these curves all the way up, all the way around. And now we're here. Uh, so they have a restroom here. Uh, it's a trailhead, so they have parking, they have shaded places to eat, garbage can, that sort of stuff. And then we're going to continue north here. We're going to go all the way up to Fairfield Park, right at Fairfield Road, where it ends right up here. 
And then over here they have a map of, uh, looks like all of the major trails in Lake County. On this map, all of the areas with dots are, are uh, planned future sections of the trail here. So all these little sections that aren't connected are eventually going to be connected, uh, which will make for uh, probably the best trail system in Northern Illinois. So this orange one here is the Des Plaines River Trail. Uh, I have a ride that starts at Independence Grove and goes all the way up to Van Patten Woods. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that ride, go ahead and click the info card above. I also have a ride that starts at Independence Grove and makes it all the way down to Lake Cook Road, right at the uh, Lake County and Cook County line. The ride I did last week started here in Lakewood and went all the way over here, up here, took this yellow trail I've never been on before to Independence Grove. I did the loop there. I came down the Des Plaines River Trail, down uh, the North Shore Trail. There's this little section that's not connected yet, uh, but there's sidewalks you could ride on, and then uh, took the Millennium Trail back to Lakewood. I also wanted to note that I do have a Millennium Trail ride that starts from this parking lot here. It only starts from here because uh, there's more trail in, uh, to Ray Lake Forest Preserve, but it's too close to Lakewood to make for a decent ride. So we'll actually start it from up here, follow this all the way down to Lakewood, and then go up the Ray Lake Trail, do a, a loop around the lake, and then make our way back up. That's just one of many trails that you have options to do uh, when you're in uh, Lake County, Illinois. So once you get past Singing Hills Forest Preserve, uh, so roughly seven miles into this ride, uh, the trail becomes paved. So about 9.5 miles in, uh, we come across Morrow Flat Forest Preserve. Uh, here they have trail access parking. Uh, they also have restrooms, garbage cans, looks like uh, places to sit. And it's all still paved right through here, so it's very nice. Well, in a similar location to the last time I was on this, which feels like at least a few months ago, uh, I've run across a path closed sign. Uh, I don't see any reason why it would be closed from uh, where I am, so I'm just going to continue down the path. And I just want to see if it's the same issue it was last time and if ComEd still has that one area closed off. I thought the construction was going to be done at least a month ago. I mean, so far it's definitely passable. The last time I was on this, uh, this entire path was lined with like these wood, something that looks like a wood pallet or something to, I imagine, to protect the trail. So uh, uh, my guess is it's probably going to be uh, completely closed at the same spot that it was the last time I was on this, which is unfortunate.
Okay, so there is another path close sign uh, right at uh, the same location as last time, although the little uh, fencing is no longer up. Uh, as you can see on the map here, uh, we're right here at Nipper Sink Road. Uh, hopefully if the glare's not too bad. So we're not, it's just this little extra bit of the trail to Fairfield Road is where we're trying to get to. So uh, as there is a gap here and I could sneak through, I'm gonna just go up to see what it looks like. And uh, as soon as I know that I can't go any further, I'm gonna turn around. Okay, well the ride ends here at uh, Fairfield Disc Golf in uh, it's Round Lake Area Park District here. Uh, the disc golf course is actively being used right now. As you saw, there was another path closed sign, but uh, I was able to go around it to see if there was any actually real reason for it to be closed, and there definitely isn't. So as you can see, there's a couple of these caution trail damage ahead signs here. Uh, that's probably what they should do. They should take down those path close signs, just throw up some trail damage ahead signs because the construction's clearly over. Uh, the big chunks of wood that were on top of the trail earlier this year are gone. And there's no construction equipment or anything that's visible. You saw, we just went past it. So uh, this is my opinion, they should definitely just take those path close signs down and uh, throw on some trail damage ahead signs. That way everybody knows be cautious as you're going through the damaged area, but otherwise, there's no reason to shut the path down completely.